الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على رسول اللہ اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فاسکرونی اسکرکم وشکرولی ولا تکفرون کالا ربش رحل صدری ویسرلی امری وخل الاقدام من لسانی یفقه قولی صدق اللہ العظیم We begin with the praise of our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the provider, the sustainer, the enricher, the king of kings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send salutations upon the greatest creation of all, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the Ahl al-Bayt, the Sahaba, the Tabi'in, the Taba Tabi'in, the Awliya, the Pious, and the Righteous. May Allah be pleased with them all. Now, we are some months into this uh, lockdown, and I think everyone will agree that it's been a unique and extraordinary situation for most people in various shapes or form. For some people, it's been a struggle, it's been a test and I say that in terms of finances because many people's jobs have gone, the work has dried up and this has caused them a level of worry which they have never been accustomed to before because previously if they lost a job they would try to go and seek another one straight away. And for some people, it's been a blessing, and I say that again in terms of time. Many people have had sufficient time at home, which they have not been used to before because of their daily work schedule, commitments, and probably particularly the weekends when people would often go shopping out of town, go for food, uh, visit relatives, um, various social functions, weddings, funerals indeed. All that has not happened and therefore most people have probably not been used to this time on the uh, weekend. Now really, some people, so I've mentioned the two types of people who maybe from two spectrums. One is people who have been encompassed with worry and the second is people who have uh, been blessed. And there will also be people in the middle who really, again, they may not see it now, but they have suffered a loss in this lockdown. And I will expand on that how so, but in short, really the question I ask myself, firstly, and others should ask themselves is, how have I used this time? Now, I will begin with what people, some people will be calling this period a blessing in disguise. And really, um, we all probably understand the meaning of that, but the real, actual, literal meaning is, that something which causes you problems and difficulties at first, but only later on you realise it was a very good thing to happen to you or one of the best things that happened to you. And for them people, is it a blessing in disguise? Then one can, ev every person can effectively ask the question of themselves and answer it themselves because it's only they can truthfully answer it and it's only Allah, they and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will know the true answer and so really um, you should try to think am I in which of these three categories am I in the blessing in disguise category am I in the category where I have effectively suffered a loss and the third category is where some people openly 
will say this time has been beneficial to me. So it's not even that they need to use the term blessing in disguise because that only applies to the people who are going through difficulty. Now, really, the first question we should have all asked after the initial lockdown being placed and maybe the first weekend went by and the second weekend went by and it appeared that there was no immediate relief or immediate change to the lockdown situation. Has it made us ponder? And has it made us ponder by looking at our past? Uh, normally we only ponder and reflect upon things when we have the time. And uh, for people like myself and the vast majority of population, time has been an issue. Why? You will all know people and people know themselves that when they are asked, do you pray Salah? Yes, I try to, but I am busy with work, I am busy with family, I am busy with the gym, I am busy with other social commitments. And really, what we were saying then in essence was that if we had the time, we would be praying five times a day. If we had the time, we would be filling the other fard elements of the sh Sharia. And again, only one knows truly themselves whether that was the actual substantive answer or whether it was an answer which we could easily dismiss the guilt within ourselves by saying I don't have time to do this because I suppose we all think well if we all had the time didn't have to earn any money and sat in a mosque we would all become only of Allah we would be the greatest worshippers we would be praying so many nuffles so many Qurans etc etc and I suppose we only say that because we know we will never be in a situation where we will be able to sit indefinitely for long periods of time in isolation and not have to worry about, well, is my are my bills going to get paid? Is there going to be food on the table for my family? And so forth. And so really upon pondering in this time, we should have all repented. Why? Because we all have committed sins in the past. We all will continue to commit sins in the present. And no doubt we will all the likelihood commit sins in the future. We will all have the hope that we will not commit any sins in the future and no doubt we should always try our utmost best but we are not perfect, we are not masum like the Anbiya, the Prophets and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that had this Ummah being completely sin free and not committed any mistakes, then he would have replaced us with an ummah that will commit sins. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows we will commit sins, but what he's looking at is are we going to repent and are we going to repent sincerely? That is really the $64,000 question, as people may say. We will all commit sins, we can all put our hands up to that. We all have the intention not to commit sins, but yet we still continue to do it. So if we accept that as the starting point, really we then have to look and if we are going to commit sins, then what are we going to do about it? Are we going to just ignore it and continue to commit sins? Or really, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanting from us? Really, he's looking for us to repent. Not that so he will benefit, but for our own benefit. Because when we repent, it is we who benefit. And by only repenting sincerely, will we have any chance of trying to abstain from such sins in the future? And by repenting and pondering, we should ask our questions especially those who have suffered loss of income, are going through financial difficulties with no immediate end in sight. Has this put the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with me? Because we will all testify that once we suffer a, any kind of loss, any kind of stress, any kind of issue, any kind of loss of income, 
we all start making dua. And I'm not going to criticize anyone for doing that because ultimately we only turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are in difficulty because people like myself, when there are no difficulties or we are cruising along in life, we tend not to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we get that shock, jolt in life and then suddenly we remember our Lord. And no doubt, many will have prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this time. There are people who have actually fallen victim to the virus. Their close family members have died. And for them, they would have turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has it put the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, into us? If it has, alhamdulillah. The next question is, how does that translate into action? And if it's not put the fear in of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into us then really we should be worried because we should all we will all accept that each of us had some level of concern about the virus will we get it will my family members get it am I safe if I'm going to work am I safe when I go to the supermarket most of us will be taking some kind of precautions be that wearing a mask um, not shaking hands wearing gloves etc etc so because of the fear we have of the virus, we take some kind of steps. But equally, if you have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should take steps to better our position. The other side of the coin is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has that entered into our hearts? And we may all say with a tongue, we all love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all love his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but really the question you ask yourself is where is the proof of that? because the saying is uh, words are cheap and therefore really again that needs to translate into some kind of action um, many people will have some experience of their wives you may express your love for your wife and uh, jokingly or not sometimes wives will say okay you can buy me a watch you can buy me a gold bracelet etc uh, etc et and really um, what they are really getting at is that your words may be cheap as you said buying a gold bracelet buying an expensive watch and handbag or whatever that may be it's really a sign of um, showing your love now I'm not obviously encouraging that because we shouldn't be materialistic and I would not uh, certainly encourage sisters to take this approach every single time but uh, hopefully you'll get my point that we can say we can love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if we don't show anything towards it in terms of action then really are we really doing it one of the biggest actions and it's free that you show you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what it's shukr. And that's shukr and being content with whatever blessings you have. Again, we all want a bigger house. We all want a better car. We all want a higher paid job. We are always thinking that. But are we actually content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given? Because if we are, then we will be grateful for that, whatever he has given us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you seek you acknowledge and you do shukr i will give you more so really again it's a win-win situation for us we do this free task of of shukr and shukr is simply pondering over these blessings accepting them in the wars we accept the blessings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us and that is shukr and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what in return more blessings and really, I'm not sure we can find a better deal than that. During this lockdown period, have we become more humble? Have we realised that human, be that the scientific world, the human race, the capitalist world, America, Britain, France, the so-called advanced Western countries, that they are infallible and that we may look on a country level on a worldwide level but really have we looked at ourselves are we infallible ourselves 
have we become humble? Because really this period should show us that our wealth is not guaranteed, our rosy is not guaranteed in terms of we do not we may think we may have a job today and it's a job for life and we will get a wage every single week, every single month, no matter what happens. But really who is the controlling uh, entity behind that? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not us, it is not our employer, it's certainly not this government because you've seen how powerless the governments have been to an extent. Have they prevented coronavirus? Have they even found a vaccine yet? You've got every single country in the world, every single pharmaceutical company throwing billions, billions at trying to find a vaccine. And yet we are one, two, three, six months later and there's no sign of it. We are not saying it is imminent. So really this should show to us that this world is infallible it will fall down and equally we ourselves can fall down we should be more humble in every aspect of our lives we probably even went to the supermarket and when I'll take the example of toilet paper toilet paper ran out now alhamdulillah for most Muslims it's not a massive issue as it is for people of other religions or non-religions but you will see that if there was no toilet paper, what were people going to do? If they ran out of even the kitchen roll at home, what were, what were they going to do? I suspect they would have come in June. They would realise, I've only got no option but to wash myself. And so really, we may think toilet paper was guaranteed for us. But a simple thing like that, it can go like that. It did go like that. And really... We should apply that analogy to our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can instant take that life of ours. We don't know when the angel of death is coming. And really, we should be humble in within ourselves in each and every intention and action that we undertake on a daily basis. Now, we've passed the blessed month of Ramadan. And traditionally, it's always been a time where we have all increased our ibadah. Be that, become more obedient in Salah. We were praying five times a day. Many of us would uh, pray uh, Taraweeh. We would generally all fast. We would make more du'as. And we would also obviously open the Quran more. And this Ramadan would have been different, certainly for the males, in that... Some, I would have to say, maybe um, would not have been too disappointed at the mosque were closed because you would have seen that in the first few drawies the attendance or the mosque masajid is always full. And as you then get past the first few, the audiences start to dwindle. And if you get around to the middle of Ramadan, then there is a significant drop in attendance, which then starts to pick up in the last 10 nights. But this year that didn't happen. People had to read Rawi at home. And one again can ask them question themselves. Did I read the Rawi at home? Did I encourage my family members to read at home? Did we even try to read Jamaat at home? Did we encourage this not only for our males in the family, be that sons, nephews, even the ladies of the um, of the house, they could have joined that Jamaat. Did we even try it once? Did we invite them once? And so really, this period should have been used productively in terms of that those kind of aspects. Now, another thing which became apparent during this lockdown was probably the increased use of video calling or be that Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp, any other kind of uh, technology. Now, we may have used that for relatives who, let's say, live in Pakistan uh, or any other country, but probably using them facilities to um, speak to other family members, maybe in the same town, we probably never did that. And really, that was a good thing because it shows us that if we were short of time when we are in our daily lives, then everyone can make a phone call and everyone can maintain ties with them 
relatives. And so really anyone who says to me that I don't have time to go and see my parents, my brothers, sisters, my judges, my mamus, my pupian, grandads, whichever relative, it only takes two minutes for a call. And really this should set the example to us that we can still maintain a level of contact no matter how small it is. But I must also address the people where during this lockdown period nothing has changed. Have they continued to gossip and backbite? Now, have they watched more TV? I'll be the first one to admit that I've watched more TV than I would normally. Why? Because I had more time at home. And I'm not going to fool myself or anyone else to say that nobody would have increased their use of TV or movies or whatever it is, Netflix, Ertugal or etc, etc. Now, obviously there are programmes which clearly fit in the halal category and programmes which fit in the haram category. And really, if we've been doing the latter and using this extra time to commit more sin, then really we should be looking ourselves ourselves that we've not used this time if actually, if anything, we've started committing more sin. And I'm not going to say, look, you may have more time and I expect you to be reading more salahs and using all that time in uh, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, nobody's saying that really because again, we are all human and no doubt we will all watch more TV. We may watch a movie or two, but really we should have at least a portion of that time should have been spent in the remembrance of Allah. And that can be through various methods of increased nawafil prayers, increased recitation of the Quran, increased dhikr. So all we are saying is that we should at least have used a portion of that time to increase our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people, many, many people who will spend many hours a week at the gym and obviously they've struggled to do that in that aspect and they may have been fastidious on their gym routine two, three, four, five, six times a week one hour, two hours at the gym without fail they would miss it Alhamdulillah one should look after their bodies and try to keep themselves in shape but really that time that they have now extra because no matter you may be, have a home gym you may have been doing some extra walking, extra running have you used it effectively again in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have made changes in your life because of the lockdown and the Ramadan, Alhamdulillah but if you haven't then there is always time no matter what anyone says, it's never too late People might, like myself, we've kept Ramadan, we've kept the fast for 20, 30 years. We've entered every Ramadan with great intentions and a great desire, especially when Ramadan ends, to continue praying five times a day, doing tahajjud prayers, increasing the recitation of Quran, dhikr, and often we would fall flat on Eid let alone a week later, straight away on Eid, we would not, we would miss the namaz because in our mind Eid is a day of celebration and we would simply, whilst we may read Fajr, we would miss the Rasar because often we've over ate on that day and we would almost think to ourselves, I will start again in a couple of days once the Eid celebrations are over. But really again, for many people, Eid was a muted affair than it would normally be. And did they come out of Ramadan having chained themselves? Did they come out of this lockdown having chained themselves? And if they haven't, those people have really been in loss. Because if anyone says to me again, I didn't have the time, 
oh, I don't have time to read Salah because of work, this, that, the other. One can easily ask the questions of themselves. What did I do when I did have time? Did I pray five times a day? Did I pray them Salahs on time? Did I read some extra Quran? And if I didn't, then that excuse, and that's what it is, let's be frank with ourselves, that excuse of not having time, it was just that, what it was, an excuse. We have no real intention to pray five times a day, but we would use, I am at work, there are no facilities, I get home late, I have an early start, I don't get enough sleep so I can't get up for Fajr, etc, etc. When I'm free on the weekends I will read one, two namazas, but then I will be out in the evening and miss them as well. These were all excuses. And really, at least the coronavirus and this lockdown period should have been the reminder, the shock, the jolt in our lives to say, what are we doing? What is our world about? Has it just simply been about going to work, earning money, even going to education every day and doing that's it and not remembering our Lord because there will be people especially at secondary school colleges, university who should be reading five times a day and often in their youth are negligent of namaz most of us have been negligent of namaz in our youth because we had other priorities but this period would have shown that again they have the time to remember their Lord and incorporate it into their daily schedule. Now the lockdown is slowly and slowly getting lifted. Uh, more and more shops are open and in, uh, on the 15th of June or so all the shops will be open. And so really that time that we had we will start again using it on more shopping, more work, a lot of people now are back at work and therefore normal life will slowly start to resume and what will happen is our time will be taken up and really again rather than using this period to say I can do this, I can pray five times a day, I can recite even 10 minutes of Quran every day, I can do 10 minutes of Dhikr every day and then try to make a firm intention and a sincere intention to say I'm going to continue this no matter what whenever my job starts again whatever that may be whatever happens I will do it we've lost that period again and Allah SWT knows best whether we will be, ever be in a situation like this again um, this is the first time in my lifestyle, uh, lifetime that this happened and you know it is again only in Allah SWT's knowledge whether it will happen again or not but we really should have tried to take the benefit of this time. And if we haven't, there is still time because though we may have returned to work, though may shops be open, we will still have that social period, especially in the evenings and the weekends where we would have possibly gone out to restaurants to eat. We would have spent all day at Trafford Centre. We would have gone to a theme park, we would have gone to Blackpool, we would have done this, we would have done that, we would even possibly go on a foreign holiday. None of that is likely to immediately resume. So we still have time to change because that time we would spend on the weekends going out, out of town, for whatever reason, shopping, visiting family, uh, eating at restaurants, that's not going to happen immediately. So we still have time to change. That's the important thing I would like anyone to take away um, from my few words today is that there is still time to change. Don't worry about that. You miss been watching too much Netflix over the last three months and not taken use that time effectively. Um, you may have now been exhausted of all the dramas and the um, catch ups that you have done, but there's still time to change. And really, it's a reminder to myself first and others that really we need to take the lesson of this lockdown period and particularly the coronavirus that why rather than engaging in conspiracy theories as to where this originated from and who did it and why they're doing it and etc etc one always has to remember even if it was released by China as some people are saying 
it did not happen without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rather than worry about whether 5G is causing this virus and etc. etc. Think about what lesson Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn from this virus. What reaction does he want from this? Does he want us to engage our time in conspiracy theories and forwarding messages and debating with others whether what's right and what's wrong and I know this and I know that and it's definitely 5G or it's not. What is the real reaction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants is like with anything in life, it is to turn to him and to turn to him sincerely. It is a reminder. There are, as he said, uh, over 40,000 more deaths uh, in this country from uh, the virus, it is said, than normally there is. And as he said, I think globally the figure is reaching towards half a million. And as we know, that these figures are always underreported. So there are, you know, a... Uh, probably around a million people in throughout this world who directly died because of this virus and did they have the opportunity to correct themselves there will be muslims who died in that did they get the opportunity to repent correct themselves make up the slurs that they missed make up the fast that they missed make an intention to go to hajj pay zakah etc etc um, earn halal earnings they didn't get the opportunity. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows truly what their condition is. May Allah you know, grant them all ease in the grave and the highest maqam in Jannah. But really, death should always serve as a reminder to us. And really, that's what this virus was. It was bringing death to many people and it should have served as a reminder. And sooner or later, maybe even this time next year, the virus will be long forgotten. We will look back at it maybe with some kind of amazement that the whole country shut down for such a period. And so therefore this period will soon go and I urge my brothers and sisters to take heed and at least make some changes now. And no doubt both brothers and sisters will wear masks will be opening soon. Now, many people have commented about the closure of mosques and how deep the loss that they have felt of this. And that is true. Nobody has been able to read Jama. Really, nobody was able to read Eid prayers as they would normally do. But really, the massages are not just about the Jummah and the Eid prayers or the 27th night of Ramadan or the Trawi prayer. It is about the five times daily salah in congregation. Brothers should be aiming to read in Jamal where possible. It is extremely encouraged, highly encouraged, and it is the opinion of many ulama that deliberately reading at home on a consistent basis is a sin. And we will see when the massage is open, what will be the reaction of people? Will we all flock back on day one, day two, day three, and then as we become used to the normality of the mosque again, we will come to this stage where the Fajr Salah, the Fajr, Jam Fajr Jamaat in many massages, it is a handful of people only. And Really, this again should serve a reminder to us of the importance of massages to us and to the community as a whole, that we should appreciate them, we should support them, and we should attend them. I'm not saying that you need to keep on supporting them financially. Nobody is after that. These massages will run with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they require your attendance on a regular basis. And really, we should appreciate them and use these to benefit ourselves and the community as a whole. If I've said anything wrong or not in accordance with Islam, I seek forgiveness uh, from my errors. And all goodness comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu alayk.